Welcome, it's my guy Jacob Warren right here as it's the Vol Report brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden Man Alive. It's worth the drive and our friends at Craven Wings tell you more about them as well as spring practice has concluded. And the key is Jacob A looks looks healthy. That's the key to get through spring camp healthy. Sure. But he's also brought the mustache back for the tight ends, which I love. Of course. And <laughs> brought it back, baby. Brought yeah. it back. And so we figured we might as well, you know, bring it back for the spring game and then, I don't know, probably grow it back out here. But whatever. See, well, the thing is, you're a known commodity. So they can hold you out of the spring game a little bit. And then with the mustache, that allows you time to go put out fires or arrest people because mm -hmm. you look like a police officer or a fireman. Making sure that the streets are safe. Everybody's taken care of. No fires. We're good. It's like, it's like you're Batman uh, <laughs> on occasion. Hey, uh, so we tell me about the spring game. Uh, pretty limited, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Josh Heupel is is nice and affable, but he is the most secretive coach in the SEC. That's my new theory. Yeah, and he should be right. Like that's that's part of it. Is you don't want people you know, knowing anything about what's going on. We, that, that's one of our rules is like, Hey man, like if something happens in this building, like it stays in this building. If we tell you something, it's staying here. Like they're not letting anything out. At least they're trying to not let anything out. Um, just because of that, you know, they, we value what we have, right. And <clears throat> if everybody has it, it's not quite as valuable as it, as it was. So, um, yeah, he, he does a great job of taking care. Obviously, um, my reps in the spring game limited just because, you know, I'm an older guy. Um, trying to, you know, limit injury risk, obviously, but also just giving the younger guys and uh, the newer guys a chance to, to go out there and play in front of what was like, I think 60,000 people almost, which is completely insane for a spring game. But yeah, um, yeah they, they enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Just trying to lead and, and be there for my guys. Yeah, I want to ask you what you thought of the fan turnout because it was Im impressive. And that's not always been the case. Uh, it's brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man Alive, it's worth the drive. Bassey Lawn and Garden has industrial commercial mowers. They've got the residential as well. And if you're restocking your fleet or starting a new business, man, you might be from Knoxville, Chattanooga, or Nashville. But Man Alive, it's worth the drive to Cleveland, Tennessee. Go to Bassey.com to learn more. And uh, Jacob, 60,000 fans showing up. I was a little bit critical that they charged the fans $5. I understand it goes to the athletic fund. But 60,000 people that show up, I don't care what you're charging. That's very impressive. Very impressive. And I, I, even like you said, I think there was a lot of, at least from what I could tell, there was a lot of people saying stuff about it being $5 and all that stuff. And, you know, that stinks that they charge them. But the fact that still that many people showed up, even regardless of the charge and, you know, just coming to support has been amazing. That just shows that people are just excited, right? And, you know, we're excited, obviously. But, you know, Vol Nation and our fans and the people that support us, um, to come from all over to just to come to a spring game is really, really special. You know, though, because you're a smart guy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. You, you No, all the time. <laughs> you raise expectations. And what you did last year raised expectations. So when fans show up like that, that's a sign of raised expectations, right? For sure. I think that they're coming to see something, right? They want to come and they want to watch our offense throw the ball all over the place. They want to watch our defense, you know, our, our run defense, how it was, you know, amazing last year. They want to come watch the guys up front, you know, physical and just dominate. And um, obviously, I mean, I think we had a, you know, pretty decent showing at the spring game, obviously. Um, kind of, you know, we kind of know what's going on on the other side of the ball. They know what, what's going on our side of the ball. So, you know, kind of weird, but, um, you know, as from what I could tell, I think that it put on a decent show. And, and like you said, the expectation is raised. I think the, you know, the bar is set now, right? So if it, you got to you got to go match it. And we, we all have to, you know, make sure we're working hard enough to, to go match it next year. When you watch this secondary in practice, do you see an improved secondary? I know there's a lot more competition there yeah. because you had some injury issues and some transfer issues the previous year. But a lot of competition there. Do you see a secondary that uh, that has some hope? Yeah, um, a lot of competition, but also just a lot of guys, you know, that I think about that I've, that I've had a lot of experience, right? You got Jalen McCullough. You got, you know, Wesley Walker got a lot, got some experience. You got Brandon Turner, who's had some experience. You got Kamal Haddon, who's got some experience. Warren Burrell trying to fight to get back on the field. Like, all these guys that are names that have been around for a little while really starting to, to come together and, and really play well and 
you know, we've got a lot of young guys that have just came in that play corner, that play safety, that, you know, are showing up on film making plays. And, um, you know, for them, obviously that's huge just because DB for, for sure, it seems like one of those spots that you can kind of, you can kind of get on the field as, as quickly as you, you know, allow yourself to, right. That's a position that, you know, it, it takes a very special person to be able to play. I mean, if you're good, you're good, right? There's not much, a whole lot of development. I shouldn't even say that, but you know what I'm saying? Like there's opportunities for guys to get on the field pretty, pretty quick at DB. So um, yeah, it'll be the seniors and the older guys trying to fight to keep their spots. And it'll be these, these good young cats coming in to try to try to take them. So. Did you know, because that was something Willie Martinez had said before that he noticed a, a difference in just being able to compete that yeah. in previous years, weren't even really able to compete because yeah. there were so few numbers. Yeah. And that's obviously it's great that we're able to have the numbers to be able to have those competitions, to push those older guys, to, to keep coming to work every single day. And, and I think that they've done a great job in leading the younger guys too. You know, it's, it's all a family. Like we're all trying to be as good as we can. So, you know, you see guys like tank or Jalen McCullough, his nickname's tank. Um, you see guys like him grabbing our young safeties and, and just telling them like, Hey, this is exactly what you did wrong. Like, this is what I do to try to do that better. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's, you know, how they're playing man coverage or, you know, their zone drops or whatever it may be. Um, but just watching those guys lead those younger guys, it's just trying to build up, build up depth. man. it's been, it's been good. I know I kind of put you on the spot with these questions, but okay. going to do it again. Yeah. Um, was there any defensive back or even second level, if you want to talk linebacker that, mm-hmm. that stood out to you in, in past coverage in particular? Um, I'm going to shout out my one of my really good friends, Will Brooks. Not many people know who Will Brooks is. He plays a lot of special teams. He's number 35. Recovered the fumble at LSU on the very first opening kickoff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's him. He, not for some reason, like he's a good player, but for some reason just always shows up on the tape, man. He's always, you know, breaking passes up, getting interceptions, like making plays. Um, <clears throat> so sleeper for sure. But I know that's not really like what you're looking for. But the whole, man, the whole group. Um, Arian Carter, Arian Carter, um, new linebacker has shown a lot of like, just really athletic plays just him dropping back into zones and being able to, you know, pick off balls or, or deflect balls that, you know, most linebackers, I feel like probably would not be able to, to make plays on. Um, so it's, I think he kind of stands out to me as somebody that's you know, shown up in the right way, you know, the last couple of weeks. Well, it's, it's funny you mentioned him cause that's where I was going as, as well. Um, if, if you look at this linebacker crew with with Arian, yeah. and then you have Aaron Beasley, and then you have possibly a, a Keenan Pilly, let's say that he 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 lives up to expectations the fans have of him, and your linebacker crew could be really really good. Yeah, really solid. And we got two younger guys too. Caleb Perry has played uh, you know a little bit of ball in in, in those minutes with in the Akron games and stuff like that. Um, and he, he's, man, like super good, really fast, really athletic. Um, you know, Ben Bolton, who's one of the younger guys too, like super athletic. These are guys that I, I don't feel like a lot of people really know about but are playing their butts off right now and are truly showing that, you know, they can be they can be help, right? Like they can be players on Saturdays. So, um, yeah, that room continues to get deeper and continues to grow as well. Yeah, I, I think that it has a chance to be a big play group as well. Yeah. Um which, which I'm interested uh, to see as, as far as something that Joey Halsley said, uh, your offensive coordinator now is his first year in that position. He said last week that it kind of pricked my ears up a little bit because I, I think of you that there's a possibility that this, this group, uh, this base offense could be four wide receivers. What, what, what did you think of that when, when you heard the possibility that that could be the case? Um, I mean, I hadn't, I guess, hadn't heard it until you said it, but um, yeah, yeah. I think that the ability to, man, go for a wide, like we'll go, we'll play in 10 personnel and be able to run and, and do that. Right. And then it can literally be the next series where we get big and we go 12 personnel. Now we have the depth to be able to do so. And so it's like, we go big, go 12 personnel, keep them on their toes. We're in and out of formations. Like there's just so many different things that we can do, but yeah, man, like going for a wide, like, trust me, I'm, not selfish. I'm not, my feelings will never get hurt about them putting, you know, squirrel <laughs> white on the field, right? Like that kid is so good, right? He's so fast. And like, if, you know, I mean, it's just, I understand that, you know, sometimes you just kind of do what you got to do. So, um, 
yeah, obviously the ability to be able to do that is all based on on depth and and numbers and you know who we can trust to play and who we can't. So um, excited to see, I guess, where it goes. Yeah, and and you're always allowed to tell me if I ask a stupid question. Okay. No, it's not stupid. Go no, ahead. but, but I, I, is this a stupid question? Could an offense go back and forth from four wide, kind of like you guys did last year when you went? You were in or Princeton was in. You were in or Princeton. And that was the alternation. Could you go four wide and then a tight? Four wide and then a tight. Could you go back and forth like that, kind of like you did with you and Princeton alternating last year? Yeah, that's always on the table. I think that, like, it just kind of depends on situations, right? You, you get in two-minute drills and you want to have all your, you know, quick guys on the field, all stuff. Um, but that's, like, I think the goal – for an offense like this is to be as multiple as possible, right? It's to, you know, or, you know, find your set that works the best. If it's 11 set, one tight end that works the best, then do that. If it's 10 personnel where, you know, get the tight ends off the field and, and let's go, you know, just try to air it out and do that, then then that's the best thing. It, it's really truly whatever, whatever's going to work. If we're backed up on our goal line, like we'll be, in, we'll be in 12 personnel, right? And then we'll run, you know, all of our base stuff out of 12. But just uh, I think the only way that works is having, guys you know i guess kind of like myself and like mcallen and like princeton was last year and like all of our other tight ends like if you have a guy that can play in the slot and, and run a route whatever do that and then be able to come right back into the core and be able to efficiently run block and then be able to you know pass protect and protect the quarterback if you have guys that can do all those things you can move in and out of all these different personnels and still have all your base offense stuff that you want to run so that's kind of yeah. where See, that actually makes me think of you guys as tougher to defend. Yeah, I mean, it is. Yeah, <laughs> like that's – I mean, that's that, a different look. I don't know if it's going to be a good tight – a great tight end and Jacob Warren, or I don't know if they're going to go four wide. I And then I get locked into that personnel for that drive. I, yeah. I think it makes you guys really tough to defend. And you're stuck, right? So, and like, yeah, yeah you, ha you have a – like I was mentioning earlier, you have a guy – you have two tight ends in the game. You have to play base, right? You have oh, – sorry, people – if you have two tight ends in the game, you essentially have to put bigger defenders on the field. I'll say it like that. I don't want to talk to anyone like they don't know, but some people probably don't know. Um, if you, I don't know. I don't know half the time, Jacob. The bigger guys on the field, right? You have two tight ends at wide receiver. Now they have to essentially have two bigger men, two safety bodies to be able to defend those guys because they have to be able to run fits and different things like that. The smaller bodies are on the field, say you go 10 personnel, there's more wide receivers. Now they can take a linebacker body off the field and put in another like nickel safety smaller body to cover. But if you were to stay in those smaller personnel on defense, it's kind of like basketball. If you got a seven footer on the field on the court, you're going to have to have somebody that's almost close to seven foot to be able to guard him, right? But the yes. moment you know, but then you see some basketball rotations where they have a, you know a small lineup and and it's all quicker guys and stuff. But your disadvantage is the fact that you have nobody to guard the seven footer. It makes sense, right? So. Yeah. That's kind of kind of how it works in, in, a, in a somewhat similar way, in a simple way. Um, we put big people on the field. You have to put big people on the field. If you keep your small people on the field, when we have big people on the field, probably bad things are going to happen to the small people. And that's just, like, that's just kind of how, how it works. So Now, I, I found it really interesting, and I, I don't think it would affect your playing time at all because here's the other thing. If, if they wanted to go four wide – I mean, we're, we're really talking about a lot of positionalist football nowadays. If they wanted to go four wide, you, I would imagine you could also play a receiver position too if you needed to, even though technically that's not four wide. Right. And that that's where I – when you said four wide, I thought you meant 10 personnel. And I think you kind of did. But no mm -hmm. tight ends on the field is four wide to me. If we're going four wide or just playing in open sets, so essentially an open set, no tight end in the backfield. Right. That's what mm -hmm. we call open set. You can go open set with a tight end and that could be four wide, I think is kind of what you're getting at too. Be the ability to play on the perimeter um and in the box, that's kind of what it boils down to, I think. Gotcha. Now uh, uh before I get to your thoughts on that that battle that was ongoing throughout the spring mm -hmm. at, at the slot position, let me remind everybody that uh, they need to check out uh, Craven Wings. They go to cravenwings.com and they've got the special sauce for you, Jacob, that you came up with. It's pretty cool. awesome. Yeah. Sauce 87, man. Go get it. Had it yesterday. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, little promo. Sauce 87. Um, 
it's a spicy lemon pepper. So those are my two favorite flavors is like a buffalo sauce and a lemon pepper. And it's just a combination of, of both of them. They did a really good job of, of coming up with something. And um, I really love it. I get a lot of people that, you know, will come to me and say, hey, man, I had your sauce. Like, and I was like, do you like it? And they're like, yeah, I loved it. So um, obviously, shout out to people like Craven Wings. Love those guys. Pretty strong. We do as well. Now, I think a lot of people were excited about the uh, Dante Thornton scroll wide mm -hmm. uh, competition at the at the slot receiver position. And from the outside of looking in, it looks like Squirrel did did everything he needed to do to kind of hold him off. But Thornton is making the adaptation to, to Tennessee when he's moving over. What are your thoughts on that uh, that that battle as it waged throughout spring camp? Man, wide receiver is such a – we just got done talking about being able to get in and out of different things. But wide receiver is such a position where, um, like, if it doesn't really matter who – it's kind of similar to how it was last year. It doesn't matter who goes out there first with the tight ends, me or Princeton. Like, no, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to, if I don't start, I'll be in the game the next series. Or if I don't start, then, you know, when when he's ready to come out then I'll just go in, like, as long as you have guys that are truly committed to just winning, right. And just being the best that we can. I think that, you know, a competition like that is not necessarily a heated competition. It's just them going and just trying to be as good as possible. Obviously you get very different things with those two. Um, Squirrel, obviously, extremely fast, and, and Dante is extremely fast as well. You know, Dante's a bigger guy, right? Now you have a bigger body running across the middle or a bigger body to, you know, use in the red zone or different things like that. So definitely the fact that they have different, you know, skill sets and different bodies and different abilities, you know, just gives us more options and allows us to, to do more things with our slot position, which is what you want. Let me let me play devil's advocate for a second because yeah. I don't believe this, but I'm going to throw something at you, okay? Right. At this time last year, Cedric Tillman was going to be what Tennessee's uh, passing game was built around. He was going to be the receiver. As it turns out, he suffered injury, uh, and and Jalen Hyatt comes in, and he wins the Fred Blitnikoff Award. And there is absolutely no way that Tennessee's receivers can be as good in 2023 as 2022. Look at you smile because that, that was a phenomenal group. There is no way Jacob Warren, that they can be as, they can be as good in 2023. Why am I wrong? That's what they're going to say, man. They'll say it just because, <laughs> just because it hasn't been done yet. I like really, it just hasn't opportunity is all that matters. Right. Jalen Hyatt, got his opportunity last year. No one thought that that was going to happen. No one, you know what I mean? Like even, like Jalen probably thought. Jalen knew that he was able. We all knew that Jalen was able. But, like, you just don't know until it happens. And the fact that now everyone is just trying to chase that, right? Like, no one's trying to be Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt is himself. We're all our own people. But at the same time, it's, all right, like, he's shown that you can do it, right? It's for white. You can go catch – five touchdowns against Alabama, you know what I'm saying? And like have 200 some yards on six catches, like it can be done. And the fact that, you know, Jalen did it is amazing, right? No, like, I don't know. it. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just a matter of, of you know, just trusting the process and those guys getting ready for their moment. Because the moment that our opportunity comes, the thing about Caleb, uh, Caleb Webb, like made some huge catches in the spring game and, showed that he can really be, you know what I mean, that guy kind of like like said was, right? And and Ramel Keaton last year stepping up and making some massive catches. Like it's all just a matter of of preparation and work and when the opportunity comes, being able to seize it. Um if we have another Blitnikoff winner, then I don't know. That'd be sick. Because we'll we'll definitely have a Heisman winner in the in the backfield. So we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, great stuff. He is Jacob Warren. The Vol Report brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man alive, it's worth the drive. Bassey Lawn and Garden in Cleveland, Tennessee has all of your mowing and commercial, industrial, residential needs. They're right there at Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man alive, it's worth the drive. Be sure and check out Craven Wings, too. Three locations in Knoxville, and they've got Jacob's special sauce. It is awesome. He is Jacob Warren. I'm Dave Hooker. This is the Vol Report brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man alive, it's worth the drive. Be sure and hit that thumbs up button so we can bring more people in. If you haven't subscribed, do so because we'll visit with Jacob each and every week throughout the offseason. He's Jacob Warren. I'm Dave Hooker. The Vol Report brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden.